<laughs> Hello and welcome everybody to this week's edition of the Edmonds Racing Weekly Show. It's a big weekend. It's Halloween for all the kids out there. Lots of trick-or-treating. It's Derby Day, of course, at Flemington. Golden Eagle Day at Randwick. Uh, it's Cup Week to follow. It's just a monstrous, monstrous uh, weekend and week ahead. We're, of course, joined by Toby and Trent. Guys, thanks for joining us. They will Morning. be talking through again. Uh, they're previewing their runners for the weekend, uh, recapping some stable performances from the week. It's been a good week uh, for the Edmonds Racing Camp. And we'll also quickly have a touch on the trials there from Tuesday where, where the stable had a number of runners. Tobe, I suppose we'll kick off with Vanna Girl, mate. Last week we were talking Rose Hill Gold Cup, but the rains came. Noah's Ark was out. Um, you had to look at other options. And now we see her in the Group 1, Empire Rose Stakes at Flemington, drawn barrier one with Hugh Bowman aboard. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, look, it was... Um... These races have always been in the back of my mind, or our mind, sorry, not my mind, our mind. But um, just the, the torrential rain down there during the week, and I wasn't keen to really um, expose on a really heavy track, and that's apparently what it's going to be tomorrow. I just watched, I've seen some trials there, but unbelievable, they're, they're trialling in sunshine at Randwick today. But um, there is, it is supposed to be very heavy, so we elected to put it on the truck on Wednesday night and send it down to you, fortunately, Fortunately enough, drew barrier one, which is very, very, uh, it's quite important going going that way the first time. So she gets to follow a rail and she's going to have a beautiful run back there on the fence. And, um, you know, I spoke to Hugh Bowman and he's he's very confident she can run well. And um, we probably wouldn't have sat there if she, if she didn't sort of fit into the race somewhere. So uh, she does that. A couple of the, the lightweighted three-year-olds are going to be hard to beat. It will make prices. Um, Philly that won the thousand guineas is going to be very competitive, I would think. But look, she's as good a chance as, as any. Um, she can run top four; it'd be great. Then, if she does well and come through that one, that run will possibly back up in the matriarch on the following Saturday. Love it! I love it. And I'll just great example, Toby, of a mare. I'm giving the owners just such a great thrill out of your stable. She was un, unbeatable just about in Brisbane through the winter. You've now got a campaigning in COVID time. So even in COVID times, you've been able to run her in the Epsom, uh, ran a super race in the Craven Plate, now in a group one at Flemington. Um, the owners are just going on a terrific ride. And, and it just shows, mate, it can be done from, from the stable on the Gold Coast here. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, it doesn't matter the location. If the horse is good enough, you know, and, and we've proved it over a number of years now that uh, if, our, if our horse is good enough, they'll perform wherever we go, which is, which is good. We've been able to learn how to travel. Travel the horse is very important, and um, we've sort of got that down pack. Um, just unfortunate through COVID times that none of the owners can actually. Well, they're not going to be there this week, obviously in Melbourne, and we we have we haven't had the uh, haven't been fortunate enough to be able to see her either. But um, she's she's done particularly well. Our travelling uh, man with us, Sebastian, has done a great job with her, and we've got the Snowden's eyes in the background on her all the time. So that's good, and Peter's looking after her this week for us. So. Quite confident she's going to run pretty good tomorrow. I love it. Everything I hear from down there is that she looks absolutely immaculate. She's in fighting for yep. form. She run a big race. We'll talk a bit about that race later on as we preview. But talking, speaking of travel, we've got Trent back. Um, a few days freshen up at Palm Cove, Trent. I'd say uh, you were looking just as good as Vanna Girl, mate. A little bit of sun on the back. Yeah, uh, that was great. Good, good uh, five days away, which was Absolutely perfect. And uh, well, I'd like to go back there and go snorkeling again. See the big broker that come whizzing past my face. I absolutely, I nearly wet myself. <laughs> but no, it was, it was, it was, it was really good and uh, lovely part of the world. I oh, love it, mate. Nothing, uh, nothing like a big, big shadow in the depths of the water when you're down there to give you a fright. Um, yeah, oh, that's wicked, mate. So snorkeling definitely a, a must do for anyone travelling up there. The Great Barrier Reef, how good, eh? Huh? Love it, love it, guys. We had trials at, on Tuesday at the Gold Coast. A, a big number going around at the trials there. The track was a little bit sticky, um, but did you was both want to highlight a horse or two from from the trials that we should be following going forward? Yeah, two. Uh, oh, well, I got two, two out of the one trial actually. So they were. Excel in the Sun again, and Sacred Zim, both both unraced three-year-olds, 
uh, both have plenty of time now and really, really ready to um, step up to the plate. Um, Sacred Zim's a beautiful I'm Invincible cult, half to From Within and, and California Zimble. He's a, he's a cracker. Uh, big guy's taking forever to get ready, but um, uh, the time we've given him has done him the world of good and he's mature and fit and ready to go now. He'll try once more before he goes off to the races and excel, excel in the sun um, makes a debut next Wednesday for the My Runners guys. So looking forward to those two. Yeah, love it. One's by Vinny, one's by Cassini Excel, three-year-olds with big futures in the stable. Trent, who are your two picks? Uh, well, I thought Pepe Le Few, he's both of his trials this time in, he's just picked up where he left off. Uh, last preparation type thing. He was exceptional um, in his trial earlier in the week. And a little smoky, unraced one that's taken a bit of time. Uh, hey, Big Splendor, not asked for a great deal of effort because we've been a, had to educate him really well. Um, he's done a lot wrong in his sort of early part. So every trial we've given him so far, we've just really made a conscious effort of just dragging him back and, and getting cover, making sure he relaxes, learns his craft, uh, and Bailey give him a, a good rap for the 2K team. He was pretty happy with the horse and felt that he went to the line with plenty to offer. So uh, while he doesn't carry a great deal of condition, there's a fair bit of improvement there. I oh, love it. Very good. And I thought he was terrific. Peppy, um, season campaigner was terrific. Um, looking in for a big prep and, and hey, big splendor. Different horse, travelled beautifully in running and uh, showed all his good manners. So um, obviously things are starting to click in his brain, which is great news for the 2K team and, and a group of ladies. Hey, big splendor. What a name. Beauty. Absolute ribbon. All right, let's kick into it, team. We've got some uh, runners this weekend, some winners to find for, for our viewers. We're kicking off at Flemington. Toby, I'll talk to you about Flemington. It's a good four. We've discussed Vanagill and the Empire Rose. She's 2,000 metres back to a mile. So that was um, one thing to throw you away. But drawn barrier one, like you say, being left-handed for the first time shouldn't matter too much. It's a lovely big roomy track and she can just follow the white paint around. Yeah, so... Um... You know, I think uh, the question and quite a few people have asked me, has she ever galloped that way of going well? Uh, we're fortunate enough, we, um, we approached the Gold Coast Turf Club a number of years ago to um, take the pressure off some of the grass tracks to gallop left-handed way on different, on different mornings um, throughout carnival time. And she, she's galloped that way, left-handed way, quite a number of times, I'd say, you know, six or eight times and, and, and gets around that way quite well. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, another thing that's going to be good, or it's not good for the for the for the race course and for the for the carnival, but there's not going to be a big crowd there tomorrow. Which which is Derby Day is a big crowd and they're very electric and there's a lot of noise and all that sort of stuff. There's that, so that's not going to be there tomorrow, which will which will help a no end, you know. So it'll keep it nice and calm and relaxed, which she needs to be. Uh, so that's another good thing because when you when you come out of that tunnel at Flemington, there and you go up there and there's the, the, hundred thousand crowd it's you know their eyes light up yeah their eyes light up and you know next next thing they're off their off their head walking around the enclosure and it's a special horse to handle that first time too so look um so that's great but not great for the racing industry but certainly good for her tomorrow um great jockey booking Hugh Bowman's very good friends with um with John Robinson Foxy who who um half owns a horse with us uh so that was a that was a coup in itself, being able to get Huey, um, and he's quite he's quite confident. And she galloped at Ramwick on Tuesday morning, and and Paul Snowden phoned me and said, "Look, I haven't seen her work like that before. She worked beautifully." Uh, so, you know, all things point towards running well. Um, back from two thousand back to sixteen hundred is a bit of a uh, is a bit of a test, especially two weeks two weeks apart. But bear in mind, um, she. She can be strong and fit, and, and uh, we haven't had to do a great deal of work with her, so she'll be, she'll be fresh enough. I'm quite confident um, she's going to be very strong late. You know, if there's any any of these things that um, are going to struggle at the mile, uh, she's going to be getting home and, and very, very strong. So um, even though not the ideal prep uh, heading into a, a, a Maya Classic, I think, um, you know, coming back from the 2000 to the 1600 is, is like... Uh, she can be very, very strong. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm, I'm confident she can run well. Yeah, I love it. I can hear the confidence in your voice. And a big field and a stiff 
uh, you know, there's probably no stiffer mile than the, the mile at Flemington, I suppose, either. So it won't, uh, it might be feeling like a 2,000 metres with the furlong to go. So touch wood. There's a good tempo on. Good luck to all the Vanagil owners. Um, we all dream to, to have horses in those big races and big days. And, and there you have it, Vanagil, Derby Day. How good. All right, let's go to Doombin Saturday. Trent, it's a heavy nine there currently. It's a 10 race card. We've got three acceptors across three races. Remembering, of course, last week, the last four races were washed out. We kick off in race four. Colton Gelding's benchmark zero to 70 over 1,100 metres. The return of Ruka. Talented horse. Um, last time out, last prep was six in the Gold Coast Guineas. So that's the kind of three-year-old he was. Gelded, spelled, trialed well. First up, has one on heavy tracks. Brad Stewart engaged. He's a $3.20 favourite. Yeah, so he's come back a lot lighter this prep than last. Obviously, being gelded and had a nice spell really helped him because uh, he was probably racetrack performance and the rest wasn't quite up to keeping as cold. So, thankfully, we gelded him. He's just trimmed down a bit, which is great. And these two trials, to be fair, have been fantastic. I suppose where he gets to in the run is a little bit questionable. I do note that Blue Ant is scratched that was drawn six inside him. So he comes out of barrier six now. Um, <laughs> Simon Mannering has got him sort of steady, being ridden steady and then letting him rip up to the line. I would think Brad can basically just ride him to his own accord. Um, you don't really give him too many instructions. He... You know, he finds the right lane 99% of the time anyway. Force outside him, leadership spill, rolls forward, looks the likely leader. If we can maybe go with it for a bit and sort of use it up and get a pretty economical run, he's going to be really strong late. I, I probably don't see any sense in dragging him right back out of it, uh, especially coming in that one gate. Nice positive ride, 99% of the time wins, wins you a lot of races. So if he can be not too far off them and within striking distance, top of the straight, going to be extremely strong late, going super and um, happy with him. Sounds good to me. Um, booking of Brad Stewart, looking forward to seeing Ruka return this preparation for all the owners. Good luck to them all. All right, race seven's an open handicap over 1350 metres. Toby Gray, missile, missed out on a run last week. Uh, drawn one here, Ben Thompson, retains the ride for Tom Headley and the team. Um, very unlucky first up, as we discussed. Second up, fitter. He's got great wet track form. He's a $7 third pick in an open race. Yeah. Look, I'm not, I'm not sure how wet this track's going to be. If it, if we get another day like we got yesterday and tomorrow morning and, and uh, you know, the, the rain stays away for the rest of the afternoon, it's, it's going to be okay. okay. I think you'll find the track, track certainly not going to be heavy. Um, they recover so quick just with the, the, you know, you can feel the heat in the ground and, and, and the juice sucking the ground out of it, which is, which is um, great for recovery. Um, he's, he's done well. He, he's improved since his first up run. I thought he was a little soft. Uh, uh, I didn't think he was that good uh, over the last 50 or 60 metres, even though he, he didn't get much clear ground in the, in the straight. Uh, but his work subsequently has been really good. Um, from the one Barry, he's going to just box seat there. It's good speed, fiery heights and the like roll along. I think, um, you know, as long as Ben Thompson can get, can get clear ground in the straight somewhere, he's going to be um, in the finish. Uh, but he will prove it. He will improve again off whatever he does tomorrow. So uh, quite, quite confident he can finish top three. Love it. Nice bit of confidence there with Gray Missile. Toby, interesting, very interesting you talk about the track. Um, as you said, Dooman's been, yeah, it's been a, it's been an amazing track for a long time, hasn't it? Great surface. Is that correct? Good yep. surface for Doom? Yeah. yeah. Just want to make sure. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's going to be good. It's, it's not going to be, certainly, if, if we get a good day today, it's not going to be heavy. It will be. It might be soft five or something, but it's, it'll certain be, certainly, um, I know we've already done our form for a heavy heavy nine or something that, that, that we've given out, but uh, quite confident it's going to, going to improve pretty quickly. Yeah, nice. No, good free draining track, Doombin. Nice to hear. Yeah. All right, race 10 is uh, rating 80, 13, 50, Fisty Cuffs. Another one that didn't get a run last week, uh, Trent. Um, we discussed, you know, he's no, it was very unlucky uh, in his previous start. He's drawn a lovely barrier here. Brad Stewart goes on. He's a $6 shot with all important, the favourite at $5. Big field, big open field. 
Um, Fisty Cuffs never raced on a soft or heavy track, so um, I suppose he wants it as firm as can be or as good as can be. But great track track stats. Four starts at Doom in here for two wins and a third. I don't see a soft track being any worry, to be fair. He hasn't, he hasn't run on one, um, but I don't see it being a worry. I, I think he's got an action to get through it. Um, and barrier four, perfect, just means that he races a little bit closer without any pressure, uh, as long as he relaxes, gets, gets clear at the right time. Look out, he's, he's ready to go and pretty bullish about him tomorrow, to be fair. So, um, well, I said all important probably crosses the lead and tries to stack him up as uh, he did the other day. Um, our guy won't be too far off, probably second or third pair and uh, ready to strike. Pretty confident, and uh, that's all I've got to say about that. Oh, love to hear it. Nice bit of confidence <laughs> around Fisty Cuffs and the lucky last Derek Dooman. Sounds good to me. Good luck to Tommy Rodonicus and uh, John Singleton, of course. Gold Coast Saturday. Again, heavy eight, but uh, lovely sunshine here on the coast at the moment. So we might get into a soft range. Eight race card, two acceptors across the final two races on the cards. So the track might be a little bit more chopped up then than it might be earlier in the day. Race seven, benchmark 68, 1400 metres. Champagne Toots, Toby for the Archer Park team. She's third up. She loves the distance. Uh, she's fitter. She's got Andrew Mallion on from barrier one. Um, expect her to run well. Yeah, so... Over to the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast track won't recover as good this week. There's a couple of soft patches on this track around the 800, between the 800 and the 600. It's uh, it's always quite wet. So uh, you sort of, um, whereas different parts of the track are going to be going to be okay. That's that's still going to be quite soft. So you know you'll get in. You know, be travelling down the back and get to those that patch. And if you hit it and don't handle it, you know you'll struggle through it for a bit and then then pick up again. So it's going to be a little different uh, than Doom and I would think, which is quite uniform. This one's not. Um, but Champagne Toots is, is, is improved again, quite confident. Um, not, not too much worried about the soft surface for her either. I'm confident she can run well. Improved off a second up run and um, she's ready to win and looks great. Gone super on during the weekend. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I think she can nearly win. Andrew Mallion booking is, is good for the Gold Coast. He's, you know, he's a city quality rider. So um, him riding here on a Saturday for us is a, is a good coup. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more from Barry One. Happy birthday to Andrew, too, by the way. Um, had his birthday through the week. I see Trent gave him absolute ribbing there on um, <laughs> on, uh, on Twitter, as did Mitch Beer. Good friends for Andrew there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy birthday, Andrew. <laughs> I think Mitch Beer called him the 19th best jockey in Queensland, and, and uh, you, were, you were hopeful that uh, his next 40 years were better than his first 39, I think. So, <laughs> yeah. happy birthday, Andrew. Race A, class one, 1,400 metres. Trent, we see run on. Second start for the stable for the Yulong team. Steps up and trip ideal for a son of Savabeel. All his wins have been on soft and heavy ground. Looks well placed here, I thought. Yeah, soft, soft barrier. Um, if no scratchings, he'll come in one gate to barrier four. So you'd think he'd be on speed thereabouts as he likes to, to race and um, soft and heavy form is, is really good. So, uh, well, he's got soft and heavy form, I should say. Uh, if there's one horse in the stable that's improved out of sight after a first up run, it's him. He pulled a little bit back in behind him the other day on the firm surface first up and was on inferior going. I suppose you could say needed the run. Coat's clean right up. He looks outstanding now. So he goes there. Um, you know, nearly at the peak of his powers. I, I would expect him to take a power of beating there tomorrow with the right run. And um, then we can hopefully push him out in journey again uh, in the coming weeks. Um, can't fault him. Work's been good and strong and looks fantastic. So gets a pretty economical run and has every chance. Brilliant, guys. All right. Well, before I let you both go in terms of the... The horse is running. Uh, it's a big week of racing. It's it's Melbourne Cup week, of course. There'll be plenty of people punting and having a dollar each way there on, on Monday and Tuesday. Give us uh, one to follow, please, each of these two. On Monday, we've got uh, Cool Intelligence, 
and um, Nick the Skip on Tuesday. We have Hard Empire, Usmanov, Beach Break, Invencore, Mayozi, Green Jacket, Paliki, My Diamond Girl, Yulong Soldier. One to follow, please, of, uh, of those runners on Monday and Tuesday, Toby. Uh, Usmanov is my choice for, for, the, for the Tuesday meeting. Love it. Brad Stewart, I see engaged. So yeah. Usmanov there, Melbourne Cup Day. If you're looking for a tip there from Toby and Trent. Uh, I'm going to go beach break, providing the track is not too soft. Beautiful beach break. Another Melbourne Cup Day tip there for you at Doombin. Jimmy Byrne to take the ride. Awesome, guys. Well, the best bit of the weekend, it's come to that time. Last week, Toby tipped us into the storm and the Richmond Tigers. He got the footy tips bang on. Multi was no good, unfortunately. It was washed out in the end anyway. Um, Toby, your best bit of the weekend, please. I got Pareto right, didn't I? I Not didn't get Jetty wrong. Uh, I, got, I got Jetty wrong, maybe. Jetty, and then the last leg was going to be fisty cuffing, and he, he was obviously washed out. Yeah, yeah. so... The multi went up, went went uh, went over. Okay, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go with Fisty Cuffs again this week. Um, I just think he's in great great form, great order. Gets a good run from the barrier. And it's going to be very difficult to beat. Love it. Race ten there at Doombin in the quaddy legs. Make sure he's in your quaddy there too. Um, Trent, your best bit of the weekend, please. Yep, he'll do me as well. You could tell when you were talking through it, you were bullish on him. So good luck, Fisty Cusco, you good thing. Brad Stewart from Barrier 4. Love it. Guys, it's been a great week. Nine runners, three winners. Strike rate strong as ever. Uh, a couple of, just a one line on each from both of you, please. Kicking off with you, Toby, Indian Dreamer last Friday. Third. Yeah, Indian Dreamer was really good. Obviously, needs, um, needs 1,400 a mile and uh, finish his race off nicely. Um, just watch watch out for him as we stretch him out in distance and um, he's going to be competitive whatever we run him in. He was unbelievable. The lucky Clover team, their hearts must just be in their mouths every time that horse goes around because <laughs> 200 metres out, he's just in impossible positions and how he gets so close, I just was blown away. Great run. Del Bergia, um, he was, um, yeah, not, didn't run that well there on, on Saturday, Trent. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Paddock? Paddock had enough, had a big prep, ran, uh, I think he placed there. No, he ran um, fifth or sixth there on debut. Um, over the top, bring him back for the Lucky Clover team. But he can he can win a race, Tread? Yep, for sure. He, yep, he, he's got ability. Uh, just done a fair bit this prep and, and a little bit tired. Very good. Looking forward to seeing Del Berger come back. Miss Jedi for Drew Irwin and the team. Toby ran fourth. Yeah, she's um she's pulled up a bit sore. She's got a um she's got a crack in her heel, so that she's gonna have to go out for a little break and and um, recover. So um, a little bit down on her previous form, but um, when she has another break and comes back, she'll be fine. Okay, yeah, okay. Genuine excuse there for Miss Jedi. Jetty ran fifth. Trent. Yeah, uh, probably needed to blow the cobwebs out. Was extremely naughty before the race uh, in the pre parade uh, in the. Um, uh, Sorry, and um, he's had that run now. Didn't have the best of luck early in the piece, but um, we move forward. Yeah, for sure. No, I thought, uh, thought it was a solid effort uh, and given the circumstances. And Cherry was in the same race. Uh, tried very hard there. Trent, uh, Toby ran second, ran well. Yeah, had the run of the race and wasn't quite good enough to match the winner. Um, I think they ran along pretty solidly because I noticed the thing that nearly beat him home for second come from well back. But uh, Chris Munster's horse just kept kicking. Um, the race in him shortly runs again next weekend, I think. So uh, he's very close to winning. Just um, uh, hope for this next week. Yeah, no, love love the way he's being ultra genuine and he's running in these three old uh, races there yep. on Saturdays in town. Can't ask for much more than that. Global Citizen uh, returned was fresh up at the Gold Coast last weekend for the two K team uh, and some other owners there, Trent. He won well. Yeah, too too big, too strong. He was he was great. It's taken a while, um, but he'll have a really good prep this time. He was not fully wound up by any stretch, so plenty of improvement there. And looking forward to him in the coming weeks. Yeah, no, terrific, terrific win. Well done to all the owners there. Also, Yarramalong Parado went two for two in town, straight to town. Saturday, grade got up. You were bullish on her chances, Toby, and you were bang on. 
Yeah, very strong late. Um, you know, unfortunately, we knocked a mite on his horse off. So they weren't very happy, but um, hopefully we can make amends with Excel and the Sun for them uh, next uh, next Wednesday or whenever the, whenever Wednesday she wants. Yep. Wednesday week, sorry. Um, Pareto is really good. You know, we don't often run horses that quickly out of out of um, out of William Maiden, like nine nine or ten days, and she was able to get back up and be so strong late. I thought um, Dusty Tycoon was was very good, but our girl was just a little bit strong for her to the line. And she now has a little break and comes back for the mode plate, I think it is, on, on in early December. Love it. Some nice states races ahead for Pareto and the Yarramalong team. Excellent. Well done to Richard and Joni Foster and all the team there at Yarramalong. Uh, loving Miss Trent. She ran fourth there midweek at Ipswich. Yeah. Uh, attitude's just not right. She's... Proving a little bit tardy in the gates, and um, that's costing her dearly. So um, back to the drawing board there. Excellent stuff, and she'll be. Uh, I think sort of Maddie thought she was uh, worth another run this prep, so she'll run again for the Archer Park team. Yep. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, we got kicked off, finished off with a nice winner there at Ipswich on a Wednesday. It's Metro Wednesday, of course, in Queensland, but racing at Ipswich, we've had a lot of luck there actually the last few weeks. I think we've put winners on the board every every week. Uh, hard Labour won, won nicely after being flattened mid-race, Tobe. Yeah, she's um progressive filly or mare. We've um, taken our time with her and, and credit to the breeder and, and the owners who, who didn't want to push her until she was in didn't want her to go to the race until she was three, so they gave her plenty of time, and um, she's repaying them now. She's uh, pretty pretty sure she's definitely Saturday grade and, and could have a stakes race in her as well. The way she's improving, so good effort Saturday, uh, Wednesday to, to to beat them, beat them easily with a big weight. Uh, as you mentioned, got flattened mid race, uh, was able to pick herself back up, and away she went. So, um, you know, all too hard mare out of a very good family, laying low. Uh, She's got some got some good racing ahead of her, and we'll get better as she matures and and uh, as she gets older. Yeah, another one bred and raced uh, by Foxy Robinson and some the Kennelly family there too. What about Big Bad Robbie Frad? Four rides for us through the week, team for two wins, a second and a third. Absolutely on fire, Robbie. Um, sitting out this week though, I think has he You've got got a suspension? Yeah, he uh, ended on Friday night. Naughty boy with the stick. <laughs> oh, was it too many, too many cracks? Yeah, yeah. trying too hard. Who said exactly right? Who said he doesn't love winning? Robbie Frad, love it. Uh, anyway, he'll freshen up and be back riding for us very soon. Robbie Frad, well done on a great week for the stable. Thank you very much. All right, guys, final shout outs. Um, Tobe, your granddaughter Sav, she'll be trick or treating, no doubt, the next couple of nights. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Jordan will have her sorted out. They love all that. So, um, be looking, <laughs> looking forward to. I, I, I did see a. Um, an outfit she's probably going to wear, so she'll she'll look adorable as she always does, and uh, and I'm sure she'll um, go door knocking and get given heaps of candy. Yeah, good luck to Sav. I hope she gets plenty of candy. I sent uh, my boys to kindergarten today. One was a uh, pirate cowboy, and the other was uh, a pumpkin witch. So um, they uh, they got right in the spirit of things, and but definitely wanted to dress themselves, not let dad uh, match them up. So anyway. Bit of fun. Happy Halloween to everyone. Good luck to all our owners with runners this weekend. It's a super week. Um, hopefully you can cheer home a couple of winners. All the best. <laughs>